Do you have any objections by Dr. Mr. Stevens about I have no tax no. matters? No, he has my full permission. Okay, thanks. Okay, go ahead. Uh, well, it seems to be that the, the uh, operating presumption is that uh, if, if someone like Dan is physically in Maine, then the constitutional laws apply to him. And uh, I just, uh, do you agree with that? If he's in Maine, definitely, yeah. Okay. The, my question is, do you have any actual facts, any actual proof that just because he's physically in Maine that the constitutional laws of the state of Maine apply to him? <laughs> uh I don't really know how to respond to you. I think you, you're gonna, you've got a legal argument there. Uh, you're going to have to talk to one of our attorneys. Well, actually, it's a question. It's not an argument. I'm asking you if you have proof. to. I mean, you said, I think, you know, you, you agree that if someone is physically in, in Maine, then the Constitution will supply them. I'm just asking you if you have any uh, actual facts to, to prove that. It's not an argument. It's just a question. What are you looking for? I mean, what kind of answer are you uh, trying to come up with? It's your argument. You believe that the constitutional laws apply to, to Dan and anybody else who's physically in Maine. What do you base it on? I base it on what we've been taught over the years. Do you base it on any actual facts, any actual proof? Such as? I, you know, what, you know, it, the thing is, Phil, it's your argument. You're the one who, and your department and the people you work with and work for, you're the ones operating under that opinion or that presumption. So it's your argument. I just want to know if you can prove it, if there's any actual facts beyond just your, you know, well, that's the way we do it. Actually, I don't know if what, what would prove it to you. Okay, well, I don't know. Let me write that down. I don't know. What would, what would be acceptable evidence to you that, he's, that the Constitution applies to him? No, I'm not in a position. I, you know, I, just, I just want to know if you if you can prove it. I, my my only the only thing that's relevant to me is right now is whether you can prove it. And doesn't it stand to reason that if you can't prove jurisdiction over Dan, you can't support your argument? Then any assessment that was done based off of that argument should be vacated. Well, in my opinion, it does apply to him. Okay, that's your opinion. That's mm -hmm. your opinion. Do you have any actual facts to support that opinion? Facts and of what sort? What, what I, are you really it's looking your argument. for? Sir, so you, you just said again, it's my opinion. <laughs> yeah. well, let me finish. You just said again, it's my opinion that they do apply to him. Okay, that's your yeah. opinion, not mine. So do you have any facts to support that, or is it just, you know, it's just an arbitrary opinion? I, I don't see where I need to come up with facts to support that. Do you? I, well, uh, yeah, I would, uh, sure. I, I just had an IRS agent tell me that they did everything ethically, but the, like yourself, they had no actual evidence. I mean, if you're, if you're going to, if you're going to be making, uh, arguments that lead to the forcible taking of someone's property, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that, um, Ethically, logically, and morally, that yes, I believe that you shouldn't be making arbitrary opinions and then taking people's property, um, because otherwise, what would separate what you're doing from common theft? The law. But you don't have any evidence that actually applies here, so that you don't even have the law to. So basically, what you're engaged in is common th is is theft, and and your your default position or opinion. You have no actual facts, and you've even said, I don't even see why I would have to have any evidence to prove my opinion. So you, you can't claim that the law separates you, you know, what you're doing and, 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 from common thievery. So uh, I would suggest and I would hope that you guys can at least put a stay on any kind of proceedings against Dan until such a time as someone down there can produce some facts to support your argument that, the laws apply to him just because he's physically a man. Well, it was your statement that he was in Maine, physically in Maine. And I believe that, it, that the Constitution applies to him, so there's no way I'm going to back off the assessments. Do you have any evidence? Some evidence that it doesn't apply to him. Well, no, no, well, sir, with all due respect, uh, the one who's making the argument, especially the ones who are using threats of force and actual force to take people's property... You made the, uh, you took the first step. You initiated the contact. You're the ones who, who are making the threats. 
you're, if you're going to put forth an argument that the Constitution and laws apply to him because he's physically in Maine, you should have some actual facts to support that. Otherwise, it's just your say-so. So you're Ooh. comfortable... Let me ask you a question. You're comfortable taking someone's property by force, even though you have no facts to support your opinion that you have any jurisdiction to do so. I'm comfortable in the processes and procedures that we have in place and that we are following. And I have no problem with with taking uh, his property if that's necessary. But do you have... If those processes and procedures have been followed. And I assume that they have in this case. Well, how can you follow your process and procedures when you have no evidence that your constitutional laws apply to him in the first place? Wouldn't that be the foundation? Let's first determine that the Constitution and laws apply, then you apply I, the laws? I think it's I think it's assumed. Oh, let me write that down. It's assumed. So you get you if you can come up with something that uh, shows me that he's that it doesn't apply, I'll be happy to entertain that. Well, sure, you don't have any evidence it does. You just said I think it's assumed. You're assuming. That's a that's a that's a that's a, a startling confession. Considering uh, the circumstances, uh, Phil, um, I, I, I uh, would want to get some contact information and, and speak to your supervisor if you're not willing to at least stay proceedings and the attack against Dan. So would I be able to speak okay. to your supervisor? Sure. 